Hey YouTube, alright, I'm going to be doing a very basic tutorial in music theory. I am definitely no expert, but I believe in uh, passing on what you've learned because uh, others have done that for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the basic major scale. Um, let's see. Basic major scale is C. I'm thinking as I'm doing this because I'm going to be... Uh, adding letters in here, so I want to make sure I have room. Basic is C, D. This is in the key of C, and you're going to wonder what the hell is a key. I know I was in the same position, but uh, stick with me. Maybe we can figure this out together. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. All right, so what you've got here is the, then it would end with C. Why? Okay, we're going to start with the key of C, which has C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then it would continue on to C. Well, let me get a better color marker now, sorry about that, so that it's easier to see on the video. So what you've got is these, I'm not going to go with the, uh, I'm not going to use a lot of terms because you don't really need to learn all that stuff to understand. You just want to know the basics right now. In between C and D is a higher pitch chord. Let's say that, well, what does that mean? Let's say that I'm talking in the key of C. Let's say that my voice is in the key of C. And I raised it up, I raised it, uh, the, the note from C to D. Well, in between C and D is another note, which would be like C sharp. That is a, a note in between the two of them. Doesn't make any sense now. I'm going to pull out the guitar in a minute and explain that to you. So let's just put this in here right now so that we can understand that. In between C and D, midpoint between the two is a note that would be called C sharp. It's the same thing between the note D and E. There is a D sharp. I'm going to explain something to you about sharps and flats in a minute if you don't understand it. In between E and F, there is no note. It goes from E to F. There is no in between like there is over here and here. So we don't put anything there. There's an in between from F to G. So we will call that F sharp. All that means is you are sharpening the high, the pitch of it. You're making it higher. So there's an F sharp. We have a note between G and A, which we'll call G sharp. We have a note between A and B, which we will call A sharp. And then we have B. Now we will continue this. Let's continue this just to make it easier to understand. If we go after B, then we would start here again, so let's just continue with C. Now there is no sharp, there's no note between B and C, just like there is no note between E and F. So we don't put anything there, but now we go to C, we would continue C sharp, D, D sharp, is this showing up in the video? Yeah, I think it's showing up in the video. E, and then just like over here, we have no note between E and F, so we just have E and F. Okay, let me get out the guitar just so that it makes some sense. Uh, all you're hearing right now is my voice, and you're seeing all this stuff. A lot of this doesn't make sense, so let me shut this off and get the guitar for a minute, so I'll be back. All right, you don't need to see the guitar to hear this, so this is the note C. This is the note D. In between C and D is the note C sharp. So C, C sharp, D. So all this really is is it's just explaining that there are notes, it's just another name for a note. In between C and D would be called C sharp. So let me just give you an example so you can hear. This would be the basic notes C. D, E, F, G, 
G, A, B, C. Now let's put the notes in between there for the sharps. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. So when you go from one C to the next C, that's an octave. You've completed an octave when you've gone from one note to the same note, one octave up. It's called an octave when you go, uh, when you cover your notes in a key and you start back to where you began. That's an octave, but it doesn't matter what it's called. Let me put down the guitar and I will continue. Okay, I'm back here now. Now you got to figure out what notes are in your key. We are now in the key of C. What notes are in your key? Well, the way you figure that out is with this formula. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. What we are going to have here is we've got C. This is going to make absolutely zero sense to you for a minute, and then it's going to start to make sense. Let's say that between C and C sharp is a half step. It means nothing to you right now, but we're going to call it a half step. Between every one of these things is a half step. Between C to C sharp is a half step. C sharp to D is a half step. D to D sharp is a half step. D to E, half step. D sharp to E is a half step. E to F is a half step. It's going to be important in a minute. Half step, half step, half step, half step, half step. Half step. Stick with me. Half step between B and C, because we have no note between there. Everything right now, we're looking at a half step. This is just so that you can understand this. Once you understand the concept, then you'll understand this whole half step and whole step thing, which means absolutely nothing to you right now, probably. So between all of these notes, it's a half step. This is the easiest way to explain it. Now, what you've got here is you've got these notes. Remember I said in the key of C, we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then we go back to C. Now how do we come up with that? Because the formula for a major key is whole, whole, half, whole, whole, that. That's a weird odd, weird odd W. Whole, 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 half. Okay, so that's the formula. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Means absolutely nothing to you right now. But, if we're looking for a whole, you need two halves to make a whole, right? Two halves of an orange make one whole orange. So if you start over here at C, and you need to do a whole, you go half, Half, that's your first hole, and that means your next note is D. When you're a D, you still... Ah, did I do that right? Yes. Okay, that's going to be confusing. Let me do it this way. This will be a little easier. Sorry about that. Let's say this is the key of C. So hole is half. From C to C sharp is a half. From C sharp to D is another half. So you need, that's your first hole. From C to D is your first hole. So C, the first hole is D. And we need to do another hole. So D to D sharp is half. D sharp to E is half. So you have hole, hole, which would make your next hole E. And then E, remember I said there is no note between E and F. There's only a half step. So between E and F would give you your half step, which means your next note would be F. C, whole, whole, half. That's two halves give you a whole. 
Two halves give you a whole, and then your half takes you to F. So the key of C, whole, whole, half. Now that we're at F, we need to do our next whole. So we're at F, you would do half and half would give you G. Your next note in the key of C is G. Now we need to continue doing the next whole from G, G sharp, and A would give you your next whole, next note in the key, and then you were over at A, you have one more whole to do. Half and half, your next note would be B, because you're going from A, A sharp, and B. And then we have a half step. And the half step from B, remember we have no note between E and F, we have no note between B and C. Your half step between B and C is your half step after a B is a C. And that completes the key because you've come back to the beginning. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So this is what is in, these are the notes that are in the key of C. Now I could do that for all of these. I'm not going to uh, spend all the time because uh, I think it's self-explanatory, but let's do Let's try doing G. Let's do the key of G. Just so that you understand this. One, once you understand the whole, whole, half, and the whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, then when you go online and you do a search on what the pattern is for a pentatonic scale, or an Israeli scale, or an Asian, or Chinese, Japanese scales, the Indian scales, uh, the minor scales, you'll understand what they're talking about with whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Uh, I, I don't remember what the, uh, the pattern is for a minor right now, but there's a pattern. And you'll be able to figure out how to uh, calculate what notes are in that key for minor or major or whatever the scale is. Okay, so we're going to start off at G. The first note is G. Now we have to do, this is only for the major scale, this is not for the other scales because they have their own pattern that you have to find. You can look that up and find out what it is, and then you can uh, do your calculations. But we're starting off with G. So when we start off at G, and we need to do a whole, because this is done in the major only. So to go from G, we need to go up a whole step. It would be G sharp and A. That would take you to the next note. So the next note in the scale of G, in the key of G, is A. So we've done our first whole. Now we're at A, we need to do another whole, A sharp, B. So the next note is a B. So we've done our whole whole, 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 half, whole, whole, half. So the next note would be C. Now that we're at C, we need to do another whole between C, and the next note is a whole, so C sharp and D. Next note is a D in that key. When you're at D, your next note would be a whole up, so that would be D sharp E. Now when you're at E, we're over at E over here, so let's just go over to E to make it easier. So it makes more sense because I'm going to run out of room on the page. So we're over at E, we need to do another whole, and between, remember I said there is no note between E and F, there's only a half space, but we need to do a whole space over here. So that would be E, F, F sharp. And your next note in this key is F sharp. And when you're at F sharp, your last one is a half, brings you to G, which takes you right back to the start of your key. Okay, now let's do another one. Alright, I'm going to do a really hard one now. And if you're able to understand these two, and you can understand the most difficult one, is this the most difficult? Yeah, this is one of the hardest ones. So if you can understand this, then you understand the whole concept. Let's go in the key of B. And the reason this is tricky now is because there are a lot of sharps in this group. Remember, there is no space between B and the next note. So you're already starting off with 
when you do your hole, your first uh, hole pattern, you're already starting off on a, on a sharp instead of a regular note, a natural note, or whatever they call that. Okay, so you're going to start at B, that's the key of B, and we want to do whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So if we start at B and we need to do a whole, that would be C, C sharp. So your next note in the pattern is C sharp. C sharp, we need to do another whole, which will put us at D, D sharp. If you understand this, you've got the whole thing down right now. Okay, so we're at D sharp. We've done whole, whole, and now we need to do a half. What is a half between D sharp and the next note? It's an E. So these are the notes in the key of B so far. B, C sharp, D sharp, E. Now we have to do another whole after E. Well, let's go back over here. Instead of continuing, we'll do what we did before. We'll start at E, then we need to do a whole. Well, remember, there's no note between E and F. There, it's a half space between E and F. So we have to do a whole. We're going half, half, which takes us to F sharp. So the next note a hole between E and there's a hole between E and F sharp and that's why that next note is there E F F sharp so now we need to do, do another hole we're at F sharp and we're going to do a hole so we take a half and a half that takes us to G sharp hopefully you're starting to notice the pattern here I've seen this in a ton of videos and they don't explain it really good hopefully I'm going slow enough and it's making sense we're at G sharp, we need to do our last hole. So G sharp, we do half and half, gives us an A sharp. And then we complete this by doing the half. When you're at A sharp, your last half becomes a B, which takes you to the key that you're in. So this is how you figure out what notes are in your keys. Now, I'm going to continue on. What do I want to show you next? All right, you're going to need to know this, so it's confusing, and but it's something that you're going to need to know. So let me explain it right now just so that you've got the knowledge of it. You can figure it out later. Um, you get C over here. When you go up to your next note, it's a sharp. You're sharpening the C. You're raising the C. Remember I played C, C sharp, D? Okay, so when you've got a sharp, all you're doing is you're taking the note before and raising it up a little bit, and that is called a sharp. But there's also a thing called a flat. A flat means that you are going backwards. The sharp means you're going up, the flat means you're going back. So these notes have two names, depending on how you, uh, what pattern you're playing the music, but they've got two different names. So C is called only a C, a D, E, F, G, A, B. Those only have their regular names. They are, they are not sharps or flats. When you come to a sharp over here, I hope, hopefully that last sentence made sense because it didn't to me. When you come over to a sharp over here, you get C, C sharp. C sharp is one step, one half step above C. It is also one half step before D. Notice that? D sharp is one half step before D, I mean after D, but one half step before E. So C sharp going upwards is also known as, here we've got D and we're going backwards, is also known as D flat. Um, like I said, most of what I played, I, I learned in the whole idea of just sharps because it was easier for me and now I'm starting to understand the flats a little better, but just you're going to need to know this somewhere down the line, so I'm just going to explain it right now. So if you have a D sharp, the D sharp is one half step after D, but it's one half step before 
E. And yes, there really is an E flat. And we're going to do the same thing all the way across. We've got F, F sharp, one half step up is F sharp. One step before G would be G flat. G has a sharp going up, and the note before that is a half a step before an A. That would be an A flat. And then we're almost at the end. We've got the A. Half a step up is an A sharp. Half a step before a B is a B flat. Did I cover all of those? I think so. Okay, so that explains the, uh, the pattern for understanding the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, which is done for the major scale. And again, I said it changes for other scales, so you just need to find out what the pattern is, and then you can figure out what notes are in each key by doing the pattern to calculate it. And if this helps you for a while figuring things out in half steps, you can chart it out like this, or you can just count it off in your head saying uh, whole, whole, half, or you can do half, 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 whatever works for you so that you can understand it and learn it. Okay, now let's continue on. This is going to be really cool in a minute when you notice what's going on. Um, we've got these notes here that are in each scale. Now, now that we have this charted out, let me, let me show you. Let's call the, the note for that key. Let's, that's the first note, so we'll call that 1. This is usually done in Roman numerals. That will be 2, that column will be 2, this column will be 3, let's get in here and call this column 4, ah, I don't really do Roman numerals too often, I don't think most of us do, 5, and then we've got 6, 7, not that many people use the 7th, mainly concerned with these first notes in your scale. Why? Because if you play C, D, E, F, G, A, it sounds really good. If you throw a B in there, it sounds really strange. Even though it's part of the key, it sounds very strange. And normally, they'll diminish this. I don't play diminished keys. I don't really care about it. I just don't play any of these notes in the key, and most people don't either because it will sound screwy. So just until you understand all this, just know and yeah, this is normally not listed. It, it's in the scale, I mean it's in the key, but it's not played. And then we're right back to where we were before, so this is not even counted. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. What does that mean? Well, that's used in, uh, in patterns where they're saying you want to play like a one, four, five. You would play C, F, and G in that piece of music. If you were playing in a 1-4-5 pattern, or if you were in the key of G, you would play G, C, D. Totally meaningless to this whole thing. I'm just explaining that so you know what that means, but that's not the point of this. This is going to become really cool in a minute, especially for guitar, because what you've got now is you've got column 1, and then you've got column 2. I'm going to put an M over here, that means absolutely nothing to you right now, but it's going to mean something in a minute. I'm going to put an M under column 2, I'm going to put an M under column 3, I'm going to put an N, M under column 6. Why? That's where this gets really cool. Because when you're playing in the key of C, you've just done your calculations with this to figure out what notes are in your key. These are the notes in the key, but these aren't the notes that you'll play on your guitar. I mean, these are the notes, in, yeah, these are the notes in the key. These aren't the notes you're going to play on your guitar because they're going to sound really terrible if you play C, D, E, F, G, A, B. What this means now that you've got everything charted out is that the note in the first is going to be played as a major. I'm not going to put an N there. I wanted to put a capital M, but that will screw you up. So let me just show you over here. 
column 2 minor, column 3 minor, column 6 minor. So when you've got your notes that you figured out in your key, C is going to be a major, column 2 is a minor, so let's put a minor over here. Column 3 is a minor, so let's put a minor over here. Column 6 is a minor, so let's put a minor over here. Column, last column, remember we're starting again completing the, uh, the scale, so we don't really need to play those. And these we're not going to worry about either. So what are the notes in the key of C on your guitar? C major, F major, G major. The minors in that are going to be D minor, E minor, and A minor. And that, if you play, if, if you take your guitar and you play these notes, these are the notes when you're playing in the key of C, these are a majority of the notes that you will play when you are in the key of C. C, F, G, A minor, E minor, and D minor. When you're playing in the key of G, you will play G, G major, C major, D major, and you will play A minor, B minor, and E minor. Pretty cool, huh? So once you figure out what your pattern is that you need to figure out your notes with, you go in there and you do your whole, whole half steps or your half holes or whatever, you write down your notes, and then you know that in these columns you're dealing with minors in the second column and the third column and the sixth column, over here, if you're in the key of B, you would play B, C sharp minor, D sharp minor, E, F sharp, G sharp minor, and so that's how you do your calculations for figuring out what's in a minor key. Um, Okay, one more thing. I know I'm covering a lot in here, and I really am, because it took me a long time to... People explained this to me. I had absolutely no clue what they were talking about. When I first started playing guitar, people said, Oh, ho, ho, half, ho, 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 half. And I went, What is this ho, ho, half? What are you talking about half steps between E and F and B and C? It made no sense at all. But when I look at this, hopefully it makes sense to you. It makes sense to me now. It took me a long time. But when it's explained this way, it seems to, it breaks it down a little bit easier. So it might not make a lot of sense, but at least you see what's going on. At least you understand it, and you might not comprehend the whole thing, but over time it starts to make sense. Okay, so when I started playing guitar, like, wh what notes do I learn? I'm, I'm a beginner, I'm a beginner, and how am I supposed to learn C, D minor, D sharp, um, F, F sharp, F sharp minor, A, A sharp, A sharp minor, A7. How am I supposed to learn all this stuff? Why, what notes do I need? What do I really need? Well, in the beginning, the, the simplest, the easiest key to learn music in is C. Why? Well, you're going to look at, look, look at B over here. It's a B, C sharp minor. It's a pain in the butt to do a C sharp minor, a pain in the butt to do a D sharp minor. It's a, it's not that, I mean, it, over time it becomes easy, but in the beginning, start trying to understand C sharp minor, D sharp minor, G sharp minor, that's way too much. And if you learn in the key of C, one advantage is you don't have all of these sharps to deal with. You just have very simple notes. Okay, but that doesn't really explain a lot right now. You're saying, well, why learn this? Well, it changes the pitch of the of the song, or the, the, the pitch of the music. But if you learn in C, it makes it a lot easier because the notes are much easier to, to play. So you say, well, why don't, why, what about all these other notes? Why do I need to learn them? You don't need to learn them. You, you'll want to learn them later on because they make music sound different and better. But here's the cool thing, is that if you learn C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor. You don't have to worry about those two right now. If you learn these notes, people want to know what transposition is. Transposition, transposing, that's a confusing word that comes up. Well, I'm going to explain really quick what transposing is. If you know how to play in the key of C, and let's say that 
your song is C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor. If you know how to play in the key of C, and you want to play in the key of G, this song that we just played, imaginary song, is exactly the same as this song. It's just in a different pitch. So, if you know G, you know G here. If you know A, you know A here. If you know D, you know D here. So you know a lot of these keys share half the notes. You just have to learn some other notes. So the transposing is really just figuring out how do I play this song in a different pitch. So instead, of, an example would be instead of saying one, two, you could say one, two. It's the same thing, it's just in a different pitch. So, in the beginning, when you're trying to figure out what notes do I need to learn, you don't need to learn a lot of notes to be able to play the guitar. You don't need to learn any of this stuff. You need to learn the most basic. Most of your songs you could get away with playing with C, F, and G. And if you can play with C, F, and G, you're playing the same thing as G, C, and D. You're starting to see the pattern? When you, when you complete this thing with A, B, C, D, all the keys, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, when you complete that, you can start seeing the, the same pattern that these share half the notes, and it just brings it up into a different pitch. So let me get the guitar just so you can understand or hear it. All right, what I did is I completed the chart just so that you'd be able to, if you're taking notes, you'll be able to see what the rest of the uh, notes are in each key. So I'll move the camera back in a minute. You can uh, get a full view of this if you want to copy this thing down. But you should really try to figure this out on your own with whole, whole half just so you understand how to do this. Do this over and over and over again. And within like a couple hours, a couple minutes, a couple days, it's all going to make sense to you when you say, let me start off with a note and do my whole, whole half, whole, whole, whole half. Once you understand that, like I said, you can do all the other uh, scales. You can figure out what the notes are in that scale. So here's something that I wanted to show you, which is really kind of important, kind of not. We're in the key of F. Let me get the camera positioned so that you can see better. So we're in the key of F. When we go from F, remember we have our whole, we have to do whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. So a whole step between F and the next note is F, F sharp, G. We need to do the next whole. What's between G and the next note is a half and a half. So you've got whole brings you to G, and you've got G sharp, A brings you to the next note. And then, what's the next note between A and half a step up? Half a step up is A sharp. You can't have two notes labeled in the same key. Let me lower that down a little bit. I think you can see it anyway, but you can't have two notes with the same uh, two notes in the same key with the same letter. So you can't have F G A A sharp C D E. You just can't do that. Why? Because some, uh, some person said you can't. Okay, plus it becomes really confusing. Now when I play stuff, and I'm in this key, I, my brain goes to F sharp because that's just how I've learned. It's easier for me to think in sharps. But sometimes you think in flats, which is going backwards. So if we have an F to G, which is our whole, and a G to A, which is a whole, and then your half step would be A sharp. But you can't have the same letter in a row. So what comes after A sharp? Remember on the list over here? Yeah, I... Let me scan it up just so you can see. So when you start over here, you got F to G, whole, whole, half. Another name for that A sharp that we've got over here, remember, is a B flat. You can do that. You have to do that. You're supposed to do that. If you don't do that, bad things might happen to you. So, you've got your F over here, F, G, A, 
this A sharp is really called a B flat. And that's how you would see it listed in music. That's how you should be listing it in your scales is A, I mean F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E. Confusing, very. It's very confusing because now you've got your C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and now you've got to call them D flats, E flats, G flats, A flats, B flats. Five more things to learn, five confusing things because you're going this way and then you're going backwards. You're going sharp going up and flats going back. So that's an important thing to know about your sharps and your flats and why you need to call it a flat sometimes. That's why you learn sharps and flats. You learn that you cannot put the same letter, note, in the key pattern, it's wrong. Okay, so let me get the guitar. All right, I just want to clarify so it doesn't get confusing. Um, <clears throat> remember I said in the columns you've got two, three, and six are minor. So you can see where I listed minor, 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 minor. I didn't put the minors over here, but that would be the same thing. C sharp minor, F sharp minor, D minor. Be the same with all the notes in column two, column three, and column six. So I just didn't write them in red over there. But those are minors. Um, so you might look at that and get all confused if I didn't say that. Hopefully not. So what I'm going to do now is, remember I was saying, sometimes you say, well, why do I need to know all these notes? How do I just start off learning? And like I was saying, you learn in the key of C, the easiest key, because there are no sharps, no flats. It's just very simple to learn. The notes are easy to play. And then you'll say, well, how do I give it a different sound, or why do I need to know all these notes? Because it brings it to a different pitch. It changes the sound of the song even though it's the same. And I'm going to play that in a minute just so you can see what the difference is. Um, and, well, let, let me just do it. I circled in green what I'm going to do. I'm going to play C, E minor, and A minor. And then I'm going to play the exact same thing in G, B minor. It's going to be a little hard to do the bar chords standing up with the strap on here, but I'll do a G, B minor, and E minor. And then I'm going to do down here D, F sharp minor, and B minor. And maybe I'll take the strap off. It will be a little bit easier to lean against the wall. So hopefully you can hear this now. Here is, here is C. What are we doing? C, E minor, A minor. C, E minor, A minor. Do the exact same thing, but we're going to go up in the key of G. G minor, B minor, E minor. Sorry, I'm leaning against the wall. Let's go back to the C. heard is I played the exact same thing three different ways, three different pitches. I was doing C, the key of C, then I went to the key of G, then I went to the key of D. So when you look at these charts and you're wondering, you go online and you say, how many notes do I need to learn when I'm beginning? You don't need to know all of these notes. You don't have to do that. It's very confusing when you look at a chart and it says you've got to learn C, F, G, G, C, D, D, G, A. You don't need to learn all of that. You're going to want to learn it. You're going to start playing songs where you're going to mix some of these notes between keys to play your songs. These are the notes that you need to learn. C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor. And then there are other variations. There's a C... C7, there's a D7, there's an E7, that you've got F minor, F sharp, F, there's, there's so much stuff to learn that you never learn at all. Um, guitar, you just keep learning. 
you find something new and you learn. You learn finger picking, you learn different strumming techniques, you can do jazz, or there's just a lot to learn. So you'll find you're constantly learning. But if you start with these notes, when I first started off, I memorized 16 notes on a chart. That's how I started. And I'm thinking, why, the, why in the world am I learning all this stuff? How does it all fit together? Well, it all fits together down the line, but you don't need to be learning the key of C, the key of G, the key of D. You don't have to do that. Very confusing, but you're going to want you're going to want to learn those notes. You will learn those notes down the line. These are the notes that you need to learn. You don't even need to learn this. Half of the stuff you can play <clears throat> with your major C, F, and G. You want to throw a minor in there, but you're going to you're, you'll notice that you're going to want to play all those notes. So hopefully this made some sense to you. It explained a little bit of transposing um, between the different keys, how to figure out what notes are in the keys. Um, showed you the minor, so you can throw that on your guitar once you figure out the notes, what notes to discard. Uh, here's something else kind of cool. Let me, uh, alright, what do I want to explain to you? I want to explain, we're going to do that in 5. Okay, so we're going to do G, C. See this column 5 over here? You want to add a little variation? You can make this column a seventh note if you want to learn seventh. So you would do C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and you could also use that as a G7. Now I'm going to show you. Let's do C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor. Let's throw in here. Let's go back to the G. Here's a G7. Kind of sounds Hawaiian. So you could do C. Now if I did a G, it just sounds like a regular song. But let's turn it into a Hawaiian song. C. G7. Okay, and you can even do variations. You can do a C, a G7, and a D7. So hopefully you benefited from this video a little bit, um, learning transposing, learning how to figure out your notes in which key. And uh, go in which uh, key, and um, and I told you I would uh, position the camera so that you could get some of this if you were going to take notes. So let me get all of this on uh, in the viewfinder. I wish I had something like this when I started off because I went to so many different sites and none of this made sense. And I hope it makes sense to some people. I've got some other videos on my channel on music theory, and those were done a couple years ago when I had no idea what I was doing. And I was just learning, and I still have no idea what I am doing, and I'm still learning. But, you know, it takes a long time. But this is beneficial to learn. Why? I know a lot. Of, there are a lot of people that play guitar that don't know theory, and you don't need to know theory, believe me. There's two sides of the story. A true guitarist knows theory. Half the people that are out there playing professionally have no clue about theory. They play in patterns only. They understand patterns. They understand scales, and they know how to make incredible music. And there are other people that know how to read music. They know how to read tabs. They, but you do what you want to do. There are no set rules. If you don't want to learn this, you don't need to learn this. If you just want to learn the fingering of the notes, of the chords, then don't learn this. But if you want to be able to figure this stuff out, then learn it. If you want to learn scales, learn them. If you don't care about scales, then don't learn them. If you don't want to know about major and minor chords, uh, scales, and the pentatonic, then do what makes you happy. You know, there are no rules with this guitar stuff. And um, I think I've talked enough. I'm probably going to get lots of mean hate comments like all YouTube people get when they post videos. And um, I don't usually check my comments. If you have any questions, send me an inbox mail, and I'll read that. Um, but I avoid comments because there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of dirty, angry, mean 
people who have nothing nice to say out there. All right, I'm going to go uh, render this thing and post this online, and that's it. All right, I'm going to finish it off. I finally sat down, and before this leg starts to cramp, remember I was talking about the key of C? You can find this stuff all over the net, how to position, how to play these chords. I might do a video on that, but there's like a billion of them out there. Um, so what are the notes that you really need to learn to play a song? Mostly C. G. These are the notes that I play all the time. I play the same five notes. A lot of people say you just want the majors. Well, here's C. Here's G. Here's an A minor. Here's an E minor. And back to the A minor. You can get a lot of songs out of that. Here's the F bar, which is a pain in the ass to learn, but I found that the F bar was easier for me to do than the regular F, which I just I can't do it. So let me show you just some basic notes. Let me do, uh, before I did the C, here's C, G, and that, you can uh, put those, note, those three notes together and make a lot of stuff, but how about if we do the majors, the C, F, G, so you can see just with the key of C, you do your majors, C, and you've got a lot of stuff you can play. You add your minors in there, A minor, E minor, and occasionally the D minor, and you've got all the songs out there, really. That is C. Let's do D, just so you can see it. E minor. A minor. F, G. And let's add a couple others in there just uh, so you can see. Let's do C. And then do an E, just a straight A major. You can. You don't need to know that many many notes is what I'm trying to get at. If remember what I was talking about with the CFG. Okay, let's play in. What am I going to play? Let's play in the key of G. G C D. Okay, G. Same thing. C F G. So, to conclude this video, you definitely want to learn as many notes as you can because it makes playing fun, but you don't have to drive yourself crazy learning a lot of notes right off. There's videos on there playing like a hundred popular songs with three notes or four notes, uh, four chords, and it's true, you can do that. You can play a ton of songs. <laughs> with hardly any notes at all, any chords at all. But remember, C, G, is the same thing as doing another key and doing G. We're doing another key and doing some of the A's. just depends on how much you want to learn and where you're at in the learning scale. Don't drive yourself crazy trying to learn a zillion chords right off. Pick a key, learn some of the chords, get really proficient at them, pick up another chord here or there, and pretty soon you'll be playing songs in different keys because it's a lot of fun, and you will learn different notes, and you'll learn different sounds and different patterns, 
and it becomes an adventure. Don't make learning this guitar. Um, don't stress out over it. Don't get depressed. Don't get upset. Don't feel helpless. It's not like uh, somebody's pointing a gun at your head and saying you have to do this. You're doing this for yourself. You're doing it because you want to learn. And if you suck, that's okay because I suck. I've been playing for four years and I suck big time. And I have the best time with it. I sit down and I play this stuff and I screw it up and I laugh. I, I'm trying to learn how to read music. I know what the notes are when I see, the, see them on the screen or on the paper and my brain does something else, I don't get all upset and frustrated and say, give up. I laugh. It's hysterical. It's so funny that my brain does what it wants to. And I make, I make it a game out of learning because it's a lot of fun. And when I get to the point where I can play something, I go, hey. I'm pretty awesome. So, okay, hopefully you learned something, like I said a zillion times on this thing. I'm not one of those badass people that's going to go and play all over the neck and try to impress you with what I can do because I can't play over the net and I can't impress you at all. I'm not that good. But have a lot of fun with this thing. And um, I guess that's all.